Hello, spooky friends. I'm here with a book tag today. This was, this is called the Halloween Song Book Tag. And this is an original book tag done by Nicole, whose YouTube channel is A Beautiful Chaos of Books. Uh, yeah, she made this a couple years ago. Oh, actually, she just made it last year. Why did I say that? Um, so yeah, this is like kind of where she takes a spooky song and adds a prompt to it. Um, so the first prompt is for the song Thriller, and it says, a book that was an absolute page turner. <sighs> for this, I picked Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Robel. This is almost a fictionalized account of the Gypsy Rose Blanchard story where uh, there is a mother and a daughter and the mother has Munchausen, Munchausen syndrome by proxy. So she is willfully and purposefully making her daughter sick to receive attention from people for having a sick daughter. And um, this goes a little bit further than the Gypsy Rose and Dee Dee Blanchard story though, because this, um, you, you get to see what happened in the past when her mother was making her sick, but you also see what happens as her mother is released from prison and um, it gets pretty twisty and it was so hard to put down. I read this when the coronavirus pandemic was starting. There was um, like a lot of shit going on. Um, it was also when the protests in Minneapolis were going on. And um, so I think like it says a lot that this book was able to keep my attention at that point and be a page turner still, so. That's why I picked that one. Um, the second prompt is for the song, Somebody's Watching Me. And the prompt is a book that gave you the serious creeps. Hmm, I don't see this talked about very often, but I get so excited when it does come up. Uh, this is Perfect Days by Rafael Montez. And I'm wondering, I don't know if like the reason that this doesn't come up often is because it's a translated work. So like, I don't know. I mean, the author is from, I believe, Argentina, maybe? Well, he's from Brazil. Um, so that doesn't really matter to the story, except for, I guess, the character. Also lives in Brazil, and his name is Tio, and he um, is a med student who develops a crush on a woman he meets and she tells them about her dreams of being a writer, but how she just like can't quite settle down and get the things written. Um, so he decides to kidnap her and um, act like it's for her own good so that she can write her story. It's very twisted. Um, but the part that really sticks with me is this ending. It is so bleak and just like haunting. And I don't think I will ever forget the ending of this book. No matter, no matter how many books I end up reading in my lifetime, I think this one will always stick with me. Um, this is a thriller. It was so easy to read and it's short and sweet and just, oh God, <laughs> awful. Okay, the song for number three is Vampire and the prompt is a book that you hated so much it was soul sucking. Um, and I guess I wouldn't say that I hated this book, but I did find it very tedious. And that is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Uh, man, I don't even know like how to give you guys a synopsis of this. It's like this kid, um, he has some difficulties in school, some learning disabilities. He's dyslexic. He gets lost in the woods for a couple of days. And when he's recovered, uh, he, just does not have his learning disabilities any longer. And he also has like this voice in his head that's telling him to build this like tree house. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it is a very long book. Uh, this is one that I rented from the library so I don't have a copy of it, but it is chunky and it is long and it feels very long. And I just, Mm, I know some people really like that book and that's okay, but I felt I found it really tedious and repetitive and I don't know, I did not like like that allegory in it 
and I don't know, wasn't my thing. Number four is the song I Put a Spell on You and the prompt is a book featuring witchcraft or magic. I know I talked about this book recently, but um, I'm picking it again. Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is about a young woman named Alex Stern. She has the ability to see the dead and she gets recruited by Yale to be a part of this secret society. There are a couple different secret societies and they all kind of deal with different forms of magic. And she is supposed to be like the guardian of the world from these <laughs> secret societies. Like she's supposed to keep them in check, make sure that they aren't doing anything that they're not supposed to. And yeah, it's a great book about like weird magic, like dark magic, uh, not like unicorns and rainbow magic. And it's very moody and atmospheric and dark. And um, yeah, I feel like it would be a great book to read during the fall or winter season. Number five is This Is Halloween, your favorite treat or snack to eat while reading. I am not really a, a reading snacker. Uh, I mean, sometimes I do eat while I'm reading, but honestly, uh, it's usually like a meal in like, I have to make a meal. <laughs> I have to eat a meal, but I don't want to put my book down. I think if anything, you'd catch me eating some potato chips because I'm definitely like a salty, savory kind of person rather than a, like a sweet tooth person. Um, maybe some pistachios or some sunflower seeds or something like that. Maybe some almonds. Um, but I don't have like one snack that I can think of that I like to eat while I'm reading because I don't really eat while I'm reading that much. Anyway, number six is the time warp. What book or books do you like to return to at this time of year? And I don't have anything in that comes to mind. I don't, I can't think of a book where it's like I reread it every fall or during October or anything. Recently, I have been thinking a lot about reading Something Wicked This Way Comes because of its like Halloween-y fall atmosphere in the book. This is about two friends, two boys. They are like on the cusp of being teenagers and um, a carnival comes to their small town, their small Midwestern town, and they kind of discover that there is something sinister about this carnival and yeah. I mean, that's really it. It is a great book about friendship and um, there is a really great father figure in this book. I mean, he is a father to one of the boys and kind of a father figure to the other boy. There's a lot of feeling in this. Um, like I said, it has great fall feels if you like to, you know, read books that are taking place in the season that you're living in. Uh, yeah, this one I actually, oh, I did read it a year ago. Okay, so that makes, yeah, maybe I'll read it again next year in October. I don't know. Number seven is the song Hungry Like a Wolf. And the prompt is a book you loved so much you devoured. I'd have to say that Crossroads by Laurel Hightower really fits into this. I think it, this is just so easy to do with any kind of novella, but of course they still have to be like good and interesting in order to just devour them. And I definitely did that with this. This is like a really oh, like grief heavy story about a mother who's mm, not super recently, but like not a long time ago, lost her son um, to a car accident. And she goes to the site of his accident. She calls it, she thinks of that more as his memorial site than like his grave site where he's buried. So she likes to go back um, to where the accident happened and she's dusting off his little memorial spot that she's created and she has a cut on her finger and it bleeds into the soil and then she starts thinking she's seeing a figure that is her son at night and it gets really dark from there um, because of course she doesn't want him to go away. So it's really, really grief heavy. Uh, if you don't like that kind of horror, I definitely would not recommend this because that is what this whole book is about. But it is so good and just, man, you just wanna know what's gonna happen. It's like, it's like the stakes get higher and higher each time you turn a page and it's a great book. 
Um, number eight is the song The Addams Family, a book featuring a dysfunctional family. This is Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke, and this is, hmm, uh, a story about a messed up family. So this is about a young woman named Claire, and she's survived the murder of her friends. Um, and like she was there, obviously, that's how she survived it, was that she was there and she didn't get killed. Um, and they are attacked by this like murderous, cannibalistic family. This is a messed up family. Um, I don't want to go too far into details because this book is pretty short. Uh, but you get to read from the viewpoint partially. There's a couple there's a couple points of view that you follow, but one of them is one of the members of this family. So you really get to see what it's like in there and like why they're doing this and stuff like that. And it's disturbing and uh sad and this character really fights with whether what whether what they are doing is wrong or not and um it's very interesting um very gory very bloody and messed up number nine it's a book genre that you are scared or intimidated to pick up i thought a lot about this one because i was like i don't really like i will read most genres if like it's the right book but um, I guess I would have to say that out of all the genres I read, I do get hesitant sometimes about picking up uh, nonfiction books, especially when they are very chunky. Um, and like, I like to read about heavy subjects. I don't necessarily like things that are very happy. So like, I tend to have like 500 page books about Joseph Mengele and things like that. <laughs> it's like, it's a big decision you know, when I decide to pick up a book like this, um, it's a big commitment. And so I do tend to kind of sometimes shy away from them, uh, even though I know that I'm interested in them and that I want to read them eventually. Um, so I don't know. I mean, this is just an example. Uh, I also have like a 900 page book about the history of California that I don't know if I'll ever read. And yeah, just monstrous um, historical, tomes i don't know sometimes sometimes they're hard for me to uh pick up the courage to pick up to work up the courage to pick up okay so last prompt is the twilight zone a book with a completely different and unique premise i chose a book that i read early in my booktube career this is vermilion by molly tanzer and this follows a person named lou uh and they are what's called a psychopomp and they kind of like exercise demons, but they do it in a way that's like steeped in Chinese culture. And they live in San Francisco. It's kind of during like, it takes place during, I don't know if they give it a, an exact year, but it's, I don't know what, what time in our country would that be? Kind of like the gold rush almost, uh, maybe a little bit, after that but I, I mean they still have to travel by train and like out west is like out west and and stuff like that um but they find out that there are young men from chinatown where lou lives um families that are sending their sons and dads off uh for a job where is that job at oh in in colorado these people that lou knows are asking them to go and like investigate what's going on. And so Lou decides to go. And so it's like kind of westerny and it has this um, like paranormal thing with the spirits and the monsters and maybe some supernatural beings and things like that um, that get integrated into the story. Uh, it's very fun. I really liked that. I mean, there just are so many interesting dynamics that Molly Tanzer put into this book. And there is supposed to be a sequel, but I haven't heard anything about it since I read this book. So I'll have to look at that again and see if that's come out yet. But, um, yeah, very interesting. I should say. Very interesting. So that's it. Those are the books. I have picked for the Halloween song book tag. 
Again, I will leave the link to the original video in my description thingy. Um, but otherwise, I will see you guys later, I guess. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.